image. What is the free body diagram for the forces acting on the tray? All right, so we can see here that we've got um, a velocity over to the right, which means we're going to have to have a net force acting to the right, since it says the tray is accelerating to the right. So we're going to have, to have an overall force to the right. We're also going to have the force of gravity on the tray acting downwards. So that's going to be here, shown on all of the, of the options. Then the resultant force for the reaction force from the waiter's hand is going to be perpendicular to the hand heading up in that direction. So this force here present in A and B isn't going to be there because there's only going to be this force at 90 degrees. So we can eliminate A or B, it's going to be C or D. And then since the force is only going to be to the right, the vertical component of this force would have to equal the force from gravity. So looking at the size of these forces in these two diagrams here, the vertical component of this one would be too small to match the weight, whereas this one, the vertical component should be exactly measured to the weight, so the answer is going to be D. Okay, next question. It says energy is transferred to water in a flask at a rate P. The water reaches the boiling point and then P is increased. What are the changes to the temperature of the water and the rate of vaporization to the water after the change? So, what happens here? It says that the water reaches the boiling point. So once we've reached the boiling point, then the temperature is not going to inc um, increase anymore. So at the boiling point, we're going to have a change of state. So the water is going to change from water into steam. So as that happens, all of the energy will go into the change of state and none of it will go into an increase of temperature. So therefore, we can eliminate A and B because the temperature must stay the same. Now, because we have increased the rate at which the water energy goes into the flask, Therefore, the rate of vaporization should also increase. So the answer should be D. Right, and this one, it says an insulated tube is filled with a large number N of lead spheres, each of mass M. The tube is inverted S time so that the spheres completely fall through an average distance L each time. The temperature of the spheres is measured before and after the inversions and the resultant change in temperature is delta T. What's the specific heat capacity of lead? Okay, so there's two equations we're going to need here. So one is that E is equal to mc delta T, which says that the amount of energy here that you put in is equal to the mass times the specific heat capacity times the change in temperature. That's one equation we're going to need. And the other one is as we turn this upside down, the spheres are going to fall down. So it's going to be a change in potential energy. So we're going to use the Gravitational potential energy is mgh. Now, using a combination of those two formally, we should be able to work out what's going on here. So, if we look at the change in the gravitational energy first, the change in gravitational energy for the spheres, we've got small n spheres, each of mass m. So the total mass of them is going to be n times m. And then multiplied by g, and then h is the height through which they fall, which in this case is l. And then because we do this s times, we're going to need to multiply that by an additional s because every time it falls through, the total distance would end up being multiplied. So, that, so that's the amount of energy we have in. And then that is going to equal our mass, which the, that's m in this equation here, is the mass for the whole of this lead. So we're going to need to do n times m, c, and then delta t. So what we're, those two are going to be equal to each other. And then what we're trying to find here is this C, which is a specific heat capacity. So you can see that N and M are going to cancel out. So C delta T would equal LS, GLS. And then I can divide by delta T. So C is going to be, let's write that around the other way, SGL over delta T, which is B. OK. In this one, it says a gas tank, a uh, gas storage tank of fixed volume V contains N molecules of ideal gas at temperature T. The pressure at Kelvin temperature T is 20 megapascals. N over 4 molecules are removed and the temperature changed to 2T. What is the new pressure of the gas? Okay, so the equation we're going to need here is that PV is equal to KNT. So here, this equation, P, pressure, volume, is equal to, this is the constant, Boltzmann constant, times the number of molecules times the temperature. 
Now that's the equation we're going to use there. Now I'm just going to rearrange that slightly and equate things which are the same. So I'm going to move P and then over NT is equal to K over V. Now because in this question K is obviously a constant, it says the temperature is the, sorry, the fixed, fixed volume V, so that's going to be a constant. So I can then write that P1 over N1 T1 is equal to P2 over N2 T2. So those things we should all know, we should be able to rearrange those and then work out what's going on. So P1 we know is 20, N1 is just N, T1 is just T, P2 which we're trying to find out, N2 it says N over 4 molecules are removed, so the N2 should therefore be 3N over 4. And then T2 is 2 times T, like that. So I can then do a bit of tidying up here. So I can say that 20 is equal to, and then I've got NT on the bottom and this side, NT also on the bottom of this one, so I can cancel that out. That's going to be P2, and then that's going to be over 3 over 2. So I can then rearrange and say that P2 is going to be 3 over 2 times 20. P2 is going to be 30 megapascals, which is answer C. Okay, this question says, a particle performs simple harmonic motion, SHM. What is the phase difference between the displacement and the acceleration of the particle? So in simple harmonic motion, you should know that displacement is proportional to acceleration, but in the opposite direction. So A is equal to minus omega squared X is the equation. So this is the acceleration here, and it's proportional to the displacement, but in the opposite direction. Okay, so as something undergoes simple harmonic motion, sort of like that. As it's moving away to the left, the acceleration will take it back to the beginning. And as it's moving away to the right, the acceleration will bring it back to the center. So the so if I sketch what those look like, If that's the displacement there, just a simple sine wave, then the acceleration should be exactly opposite to that, like that. Okay, that's what this equation here is telling us. So the phase difference between those is their half a cycle out of sync or pi radians out of sync, which is answer C. Okay, this one says, which graph shows a variation with time t of kinetic energy Ke of an object undergoing simple harmonic motion, SHM of period t? All right, now, so we're talking about kinetic energy. Now, kinetic energy is a scalar, it's not a vector. So since it's a scalar, we can't have negative values, all the values should be positive. So we can eliminate A and B straight away because they involve negative values. It's got to be a scalar, so it has to be C or D. Then... We should know that in kinetic energy, I'm uh, sorry, in simple harmonic motion, particle is moving from side to side like so. Now, as it goes through the center, from the center, back to the center, then the other way back to the center, that is one cycle. So it goes through the center twice, each cycle, firstly going to the left and then secondly going to the right. The maximum speed will occur as the particle is moving through the center and maximum speed will occur first of all to the right and then to the left. So it will occur twice each cycle, so therefore the kinetic energy will be a maximum each cycle. And also at the extremes of the motion, the, mo the velocity will be zero at the extremes of the motion as it comes to a stop and then comes to a stop. So twice each cycle, the kinetic energy should be zero and twice each cycle it should be a maximum. So the answer is therefore D.